So I've had quite a few people request that I do the power of makeup video. Um, and to be honest, I hadn't even paid that much attention to what the power of makeup thing really was. So I had to go and watch lots of videos, but I did think it would be like an interesting thing to do because like, the majority of videos I saw, I totally agreed with. I was like, yes, this is honest, this is truthful, this is how I feel, yes. But then, but then I saw one or two videos that just, nah, I didn't get it. It seemed so, so overly grandiose and so saccharine and so delusional and really quite fake and quite annoying and irksome. And I felt like I wanted to give my much more blunt and honest and gritty opinion about natural beauty and makeup and all of this stuff. Because I do feel that my views on it are more down to earth than some of the videos I've seen on this subject and I think that's probably mostly a product of my age that I think I'm probably older than anyone I've seen doing this video so far and certainly the people who made the very very kind of saccharine jazz hands L'Oreal spokeswoman on crack type videos were quite young and obviously we, when you get older you do have to reach some quite brutal conclusions regarding your own face um, so I, I thought it would be an interesting video to do. Also, I think it's it's just funny when it comes to goth makeup, you know, that it's, it's always going to look crazier, like the two sides of your face when you've got no eyebrows, when you wear crazy coloured lenses, it's always going to look quite quite crazy so I thought it would be a fun thing to do so yeah it's, it's quite quite weird to be making a video with a potato face um, my skin is doing horrible things as well just to, like really help me out with this video horrible things um, I do have to disclaim I because I wanted to be able to see what I was doing I had to put in contact lenses and I don't own any contact lenses that are clear um, these are pretty much natural lenses they've just got a very slight green tint on them so they're just a little bit greener than my actual eyes. So that's my disclaimer. Everything else is is my potato face. Um, so I guess where most people started with this video is being comfortable putting your potato face on the internet. Um, and like many of the people in the videos I saw, I did have quite a few years of my life where I would not go anywhere without makeup. And the funny thing is that these were the years when I didn't really know what I was doing with makeup anyway, so my makeup was pretty crap. It didn't really make me look that much better, but all the same for me, it was like I have to be wearing it to go anywhere. Whereas these days, obviously, I don't really give any fucks at all. I go out without makeup on most days. Um, and I, I think that's good. I think it's much better to just wear makeup when when you want to so it, it's like a fun thing to put it on it's fun and creative every time it's not like this obligatory morning chore you have to do before anyone can see you because that's how it used to be um whereas now i like the fact that it's it's an optional fun thing and i think that's a much better way for makeup to be but i think kind of the turning point for me with becoming comfortable with having a naked face in public um, was was when I found the makeup addiction subreddit, you know, the reddit makeup addiction thing because um, people on there often post like before and after posts and I mean they're like really amazing like the first time I saw those I was completely blown away because you see the before picture and it's you know this woman who's usually just got out of bed, hasn't done her hair, hasn't done anything so she's got crazy hair, wild eyes, she's like, yeah, she looks like a homeless alcoholic who's just fallen out of a tree. And you think, my God. And then you scroll down and you see this same person transformed into this kind of sleek, professional, beautiful looking creature. And it's really mind blowing. It's almost like a parallel universe kind of thing of the same person. And I found that so kind of brave and refreshing and amazing for people to put these pictures of themselves on the internet not just a makeup free picture because you know a lot of people put up makeup free pictures on the internet these days but if we're being honest most of us are a little bit a little bit deceptive about it you know people who put makeup free pictures on instagram and facebook generally speaking they you know they're gonna go for like flattering lighting do their hair a little bit maybe just put on a bit of face powder maybe just just use beauty mode on the phone or use a little bit of a smooth tool on the thing i think there's most people a little bit of deception with makeup free pictures whereas on the makeup addiction one the whole point was to show this is the terrifying thing I look like in the morning this is how bad I look in the morning because the focus of these photos it wasn't about saying look how naturally beautiful I am look I just came out of the womb beautiful I wake up like this it wasn't about that it was about saying look I look terrible in the morning I look like a crazy person but 
look what I can do with makeup. It wasn't about saying I'm naturally beautiful, it was about saying I am brilliant at makeup. And I found that a really kind of honest and awesome take that, yeah, because I, I do feel this about about the whole the whole kind of natural beauty thing on the internet and this whole this whole sort of whatever the word is platitude that that people give to each other on the internet about beauty that you know in the makeup addiction sub subreddit there was no pretense of this you know nobody was claiming oh i'm so naturally beautiful people were being so grittily honest you know these high resolution photos of you looking unflattering as hell first thing in the morning and it was so truthful and I found that so 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 refreshing because it, it is this awful platitude that people spew all over the internet that you know everyone is told oh everyone is naturally beautiful everyone is so beautiful and I, I feel like this this isn't true obviously it's, it's not true people are different and you know and I don't feel that I'm naturally beautiful at all I, I mean I'm you know I'm content with my potato face now I don't care about going out in it, I think because of seeing these photos, that before I saw those photos, I was genuinely convinced that I was way more hideous than anyone else in the world when it came to my naked face. That, you know, none of my friends had seen my naked face. If I went to a festival and I got up for a hungover breakfast, I would at least put on foundation and sunglasses. So to see all these other pictures and to be like, motorbike, to be like, oh my God, most people look like mad crackheads in the morning. That, that was really reassuring to me and I think I think that's more reassuring than to constantly have everyone spewing oh everyone's naturally beautiful I think it's it's more refreshing to know you know what lots of people aren't naturally beautiful lots of people are actually quite flawed and quite bizarre looking without makeup and that's cool because that that is more reassuring and it, it does kind of bug me this this whole thing that you know whenever anyone puts a photo on the internet they're told oh you're so beautiful everyone's so beautiful and it it bugs me on a, on a variety of levels that, you know, obviously, if if everyone was beautiful, the word the word beauty ceases to have any meaning. I mean, I, I do agree with, you know, everyone is beautiful in their own way, because yes, they are, but the ways that people can be beautiful often have nothing to do with their physical appearance. You know, it can be their inner traits that are beautiful about them, not naturally, you know, their, their physical appearance. And there are so many more human values that are far more kind of valuable and precious than physical beauty. Saying that everyone is beautiful is, is like saying that all dogs are white. You know, all dogs are not white. Dogs are different colours. Dogs have different qualities. Some of them are very fun. Some of them are very loving. Some of them are very pretty or intelligent. They're all different. They all have different values. And to say that they're all white and they're all the same, it doesn't do them any favours. It's It's you know, it's diminishing them all and it's diminishing their individuality and I feel this with the everyone is beautiful thing that, you know, just like dogs, people are different, people have different qualities. Some people are physically beautiful, some people are not physically beautiful, but they have other attributes that are far more valuable, you know, their kindness, their empathy, the way they look after their children or their animals, their artistic abilities, their ma mathematics skills, their eloquence, you know, all, all these things that people can have. And all, all of these qualities seem to be sort of diminished and ignored by the fact that the internet age focuses so intensely on physical beauty that it's the only thing that's valued. You know, and I do understand this, obviously, because, because the internet, people on the internet have no attention span whatsoever. I know this. I, you know, having spent years when I was blogging purely with writing, nobody on the internet has the attention span to read a page of text, they just don't. People on the internet, they just wanna look at pretty things and they wanna flip past them really quickly, they just wanna suck up all the pretty things and if you're not a pretty thing, nobody wants to look at you and nobody cares. So I do understand, you know, in this internet age, particularly for young people who've, this is the only culture they've ever known, I do understand it being like, oh my God, physical beauty is the only thing that matters. Um, but I, I feel like this, this platitude, this, oh my God, you're so beautiful, everyone's so beautiful. I do feel it's, it's harmful that there are so many more things you should be praising about a person. Um, you know, when, when people put up pictures on their Facebook, I, th I think people compliment way too much on physical appearance and people don't compliment each other enough on the things that actually matter, you know, the things that actually draw them together, you know, 
your best friends, I'm pretty sure you've stayed friends with them for a long time, not because they're fucking pretty, but because of who they are inside. And I think those are the things you need to compliment about a person, not just like, oh my God, your lipstick is so good today. Cause why does that matter? I just, so those are kind of kind of my, my botherations on the subject of natural beauty that, that yeah, I feel, I, I don't, I don't feel that I'm naturally beautiful at all. Um, I mean, this is, this is fairly good lighting, but my God, if you see me in overhead lighting, I have bags under my eyes, like a fucking, like, like a 60 year old man, the bags under my eyes, I'm not even exaggerating. I, I don't feel that I'm naturally beautiful at all, but I, I feel that's fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, because when it comes to makeup, I think it is kind of cooler to be able to say, yes, the, my beauty is a product of my skill. It is not just my genetics, because what, why, is, why is natural beauty even anything to be that proud of? You didn't earn it. It's like being born with money. You know, you didn't earn that money. Why, why are you proud of it? It's, it's just genetic lottery. So I kind of feel it's, it's cooler to be able to say, look, I look like a fucking potato, naturally, but because I'm really good at makeup and because I've spent years learning makeup and learning these skills, I can turn myself into a work of art and I think that's a cooler thing. What else was I gonna say? But yeah, I mean, as I said, I think these are things that you learn when you get older that you do have to realize that any beauty you have physically is a temporary thing. You know, that when you get to my age, you do realize within probably about the next eight years, it's all gonna hit the ground and it's all gonna just go to bollocks, really. So you do have to realize you have to value more important things about yourself. If all you place value on in life is what your face looks like, you're gonna have the worst midlife crisis in the world, you really are. You know, it's, it's even if I was the most beautiful person in the world, it's, it's not gonna last forever. You know, in a few more years, I, all, of, all of the things I value in the world are gonna be gone and I'm gonna have no idea who I am, you know? So you get older and you do have to realize you have to value things about yourself you know, inside your creative abilities and your skills and who you are as a person and you have to value that more than what you look like and I think that is a big part of being happy to go out without makeup now that, um, you know, that I, I feel it's, it's not the only thing that matters about me so it, does, it doesn't really matter if, if people see this because it, it's not the sum total of what I am. Um, so I, I guess that's the end of my rant on that thing. But regarding makeup, I do think makeup is particularly cool when you're a gothy person. That I do love the fact that there are no rules when it comes to gothy makeup. Because, I, you know, I see so many um, kind of mainstream sort of beauty bloggers and things on YouTube complaining about, about the restrictions of kind of mainstream makeup, particularly eyebrows these days. Oh my God, you like, there's only one kind of eyebrow you can have. You have to have a big fat power brow. It's gotta be, you know, absolutely pristine power brow. And if you have like skinny brows, oh my God, people are gonna hate you. No matter how skilled your makeup is, if it doesn't fit in with like the exact current trend, you know, that's that's it. You know, and the thing is, these, these fashions change so quickly that in another 10 or 15 years, you're, all these people are going to be looking back on their big fat power brow pictures and going, oh my god, that looks so dated, Ugh, how did I ever wear that? You know, just like people do with 80s perms and things now, it's uh, so kind of, you know, fashionable makeup does bug me that people get so, you know, Nazi-like about it. But then, by definition, you're going to be laughing at it in another 15 years because that's how it goes, whereas with goth makeup, there are no rules. You can do any kind of crazy things with your eyebrows if you want, and no one's gonna mock you just because, oh my God, eyebrows shouldn't look like that. Eyebrows can only look a certain way. And all of these things, you've got so much more license for creativity with gothic makeup. Um, you know, and I think that's really cool that goths do like to express themselves visually. And, you know, one of the reasons that I don't dress in male clothing all the time is that it's so boring and so restrictive, you know, you have boring clothing and you don't get to do really anything with your face. And I feel quite sorry for guys that they just, they're stuck with this and that's, you yeah, can't really do anything with it because society says, no, you can't. And that's, that's a bit rubbish. So I do like the fact that, you know, I'm not stuck with a boring, bland potato face all the time. I could do, I can have a different face every day of my life if I want to. And I think that's an awesome thing. Um, and it also kind of gives me an outlet for my, my love of splattery rainbow colours that while I always go for kind of black clothing options, I do like to have splatters of colours 
here and there and it often comes out on my face and that is quite nice and I like it. Um, so I guess, I guess that's probably really all I have to say on this subject that was quite a big rant. So I guess, I guess onwards to scribbling on my face. So for maximum effect I think I'm going to put in one of my lenses that I would normally wear in this eyeball before I put my half a face on. I shall see you in a moment. Behold the lesser spotted potato in all its glory. It has begun the camouflage ritual where it smears itself liberally and greasily in mud from the banks of the river Lamasca in order to disguise its potato-like nature, smearing itself hither and thither until it is greased slippery, slimy, and disgusting, but no longer resembling a potato, smeared and greasy and slippery and grisly, and then it begins powdering itself with some strange substance that may well be cocaine in order to fake the texture of human skin, powdered, now it begins smearing brown things all about its eyeballs to make its eyes appear large and fierce and intimidating to the creatures that may eat this humble potato. Now it begins painting its eyeballs in shades of gold to repel radio waves or something. Slimy, slimy, slimy paint. And now the creature begins fanning its eyeball wildly to cool itself down because eyeballs overheat all the time as everybody knows. Now it is performing grisly oral surgery on itself with a tool of dubious cleanliness, poking itself dangerously in the eye with a variety of pointy implements. The potato sniggers at this act of lurid self-mutilation, endangering the safety of its own eyeball, painting obsessively about its eyes in order to appear terrifying to potato-eating monsters. Now it paints itself blue because potatoes do like colours, and then it resumes the ritual of the scribbling, for this potato is of a gothic ilk, and the gothic potatoes are well known for their strange and unique facial markings. These potatoes will scribble on their faces for hours upon hours if left unchecked, scribbling themselves into an early grave. Endless adornment of the eyeball. Scribbly, 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 scribbly. Now the potato must fake some eyebrows, for all human beings have eyebrows, and potatoes are sadly bereft of these facial adornments. Thus the potato must fake some kind of eyebrow. Thus it resembles a human. Now the potatoes begin drawing dents in its face, for the human population find dented faces highly attractive. Dents everywhere, but only in the right places. There are specific places that a dent must be in one's face. Thus the potato dents its face attractively. Dented face. Dents in the sides of its head as though its brain were imploding. Dents everywhere. Now the potato is combing its eyeball hairs before sticking on false eyeball hairs, no doubt stolen from the corpse of a human. And now it has a hairy eyeball and it begins splodging black tarry ooze about its oral cavity in order to make itself appear fierce and carnivorous, a large black mouth which may devour its enemies, scribbling this kind of tarry filth all about its mouth to create what the humans call blowjob lips, fierce and intimidating and slimy. 
It paints them gold for maximum effect, and then begins making its entire face shiny, shiny face. And thus the potato has become a human being. So this is my finished half a face and it's super, super freaky. I don't think I should go to the shops like this, um, but I think it's kind of cool. Like I knew it would be really crazy with like one eyebrow and gothy makeup. I knew it would be really crazy. Um, so on the two sides of my face, the, which way, which way? The potato face is the side you eventually see when you get to know me. And if I'm going to be really relaxing or I want to be writing, anything where I have to really concentrate, I'm always a potato because I find it such a distraction having lashes and lenses and lipstick and all of this stuff on my face that um, I, I can concentrate much better being a potato. And it is always a lovely thing to take off makeup and to be completely laid back and comfortable, to be fully comfortable and to be able to rub your eyes and not have lenses in and all the rest of it. So that's nice. But equally kind of this side is the side that I see as being more myself, that if I look in a mirror with makeup on, I see much more myself and how I view myself and an expression of what I am really, rather than just this, this kind of like blank potato slate. Um, it was something I posted on Instagram a while back that I find really funny. I feel, I do feel that like this side is kind of like this, this like elaborate illusion and you, you see, you know, in like restaurants and clubs and stuff, you see all these kind of like elegant, sophisticated creations walking around. And the thing that nobody knows is that this is just an elaborate machine. And inside every one of these like elegant machines you see walking around, there's like, there's a little potato inside and the potato is just like bouncing around inside the machine, crunching the gears and making it move. And going, nobody knows. Everybody thinks I really look like this. Everybody thinks this is, this is really me, that I'm really all elegant. But inside all of those elegant creatures, there's a little potato and the little potato is like, nobody knows I'm in here. Nobody knows I'm a potato, really. And that's kind of how I feel about makeup. But I do feel it's cool that like we get to kind of create these sort of elaborate illusions and we get to sort of portray our soul and create the, the body we want to live in rather than being stuck being a naked little potato forever and ever. So, yeah, so, so which way, which way, which way? Potato, pretty face, potato. Oh my God, actually my hands even match. Like I've got like my stumpy guitar hand with my potato face and my like claw hand with my painted face. So anyway, pretty face. Potato, 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 where is it? Potato, potato, pretty face, potato. Right, I'm gonna go away, this is too much fun. I'm gonna have to like put on the rest of this makeup so I don't wander around looking crazy all day. So yeah, bye-bye, potato, bye-bye. <laughs>